Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode three of our level one advanced beginner ballet classes from my living room to yours, care of Canada's National Ballet School. My name is Ian Parsons, and for those of you who I've not met before, hi, and those of you who I have met before, a big hi as well. I'm so glad to welcome the adult ballet community from NBS and any new faces that might be joining us. If you're our new face, I strongly urge you to check out episodes one and two that you can find on the Canada's National Ballet School website portal for our Dancing at Home. Uh, the music that we're going to be using today is by the fantastic Rob Thaller, as always. Uh, I get to work with Rob every single day in the professional ballet program. Well, not right now, which I'm very sad about, but when we're in the studio, I get to see Rob every day and he's a wonderful musician. So I'm really looking forward for you to hear even more of his music. And as usual, we need to do our little safety spiel. Make sure you have lots of space around you. If you need to, banish people to the other room and say, this is me time. This is ballet time, and you're going to have lots of space, hopefully, to do that with a bar that is secure enough so that you don't drag it with you. Though remember, light touch, light touch. Yes, no death grips. Uh, make sure that your surface is nice and sticky enough. Yeah, we don't want it to be too slippery and have you falling down and bruising something like your ego. Uh, and now that we've gotten that out of the way, let's get a move on. So I just watched my introduction back and I realized I had a lovely peacock tail at the back of my hair. I think I flattened it down now. So my apologies to those of you of the hairstylist persuasion. I'm so sorry. So warm up. We begin on all fours. This is like we did last week, so feel free to fast forward. Actually, I'm gonna fast forward a little bit as well so we can get a move on to the meatier stuff. So we start on all fours, and we go five, six, and seven, eight, and cat, two, and a cow, four, I'll go a little bit faster, five, six, do that three times, eight, one, two, three, four, everyone's favorite, six, seven, eight, 12 counts worth of plank. Lower back down. Put your forehead on your hands. Turn out in first position. Four tundis back with the right leg. One, two, three, four. Four tundis back with the left. Seven, eight. Up. Curve. Wiggle, wiggle, waggle. Roll up, roll up, roll up. Step to the bar. You go one, two, and three. Four, stern to the ceiling. Six, seven, eight, twist right, two, three, four, twist left. One more time, double time. Yeah, da, 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 right and left, rise. Ah! Last week of this warm up, make it count, cat and cow. Stepping to the bar. 
the spiral to the right. exercise. Starting in first, before we start this exercise, I just want those of you who did do our episode two, our last class, I want you to remember that we did that small, bigger, and bigger plie, you know, that very technical hemi, semi, demi plie term that we talked about. Yeah, so that will come in handy. So we go five and a six, and seven and eight. We go down four counts. One and two. Coming up three and four. One faster. Five and six. Now we don't do three. We do a small one and then your full demi. So hemi demi up. Grand plie. Arm in second. Grand plie. And three. And four, and tendu, and six, and seven. Ooh, my body could be an ad for Rice Krispies today. And down, snap, crackle, pop, and uh, up, and four, and quicker, five, and six. Hemi demi, hemi demi up, and grand plie, and two, and up. Three and four, tendu five and six, and closing fifth front and eight. Now, exactly the same thing except for the grand plie. So we do long demi, two, three, four, five, six, hemi, demi, out, another long demi plie. One and two, up three and four, tendu side. And six, like last week, back where you came from. And eight, porta bra with an arm, forward. One, and two, find your flat back. Three, and four, recover. Five, and six, arm to third. Seven, and eight, now with the arm up, comrade back. One, and two, oh gosh, and four, open the arm, five. And six, and allongé to finish. Back. 
So before we go on to the second side, we start out with that really long demi-plié. So that one that takes a long time in four counts. This going down is the easy part of a plié. The coming up is the harder part because it's really easy to feel, oh yes, my knees open to the side. I make this beautiful diamond shape here. However, it's very easy on the way up to kind of let everything rotate in and then your knees not in the right place. So you want to think about keeping, again, I talk, talk about that barber pole leg a lot. That barber pole leg actively going around on the way up. Woo! And then you feel like you're getting nice good work at the back there. Plie second side. Now this is the easier part. Now here's your work. to fifth, two, we go side, three, four, closing front, six, and quicker back to first, sliding back, two, and a three, four, and a squeeze, in quicker, seven, and eight, now you brush your foot out, you do a little enveloppe, and you roll through your foot, so we're going one, two, plie, three, think like you're landing from a jump, four, five, six, oh, your arm is in second, seven, eight. And then we reverse the whole thing. So one, two, long tondu, long tondu, quick tondu, in, close back this time, long tondu, close back tondu, quick tondu, to the front, to da, ya, da, 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 ya, da, 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 first, one, two, plie, three, four, and five. Six, plie, seven, eight, to finish. And really acknowledging again, like we've been talking about for the past couple weeks, the fact that your foot has multiple joints in it and it's really articulate. Slide. Slow tondu. Slide front again, this time side. Closing front, quick tondu. Envelope, really land from a jump here. Reverse. To the back, closing back from 
the side. Front again. You closed first last time, didn't you? Now before the second side of the tendu, when we do this enveloppe and roll down, and I keep saying like landing from a jump, that's what you want to think about when you actually jump. It's providing a little bit of eccentric resistance from that foot. So what I mean is there's three different types of muscle contractions and the one that I'm talking about, eccentric, is where the muscle fibers underneath your foot are actually lengthening but they're active at the same time. They're still providing resistance to absorb the shock as opposed to when we jump just letting it go and collapse down. I actually use my feet to resist on the way down and that's what you want to get when you do your jumps. Jeté. This one does start in fifth, and then we go five, six, seven, eight. We go lift coup de pied devant, lift one, two, jeté front, four, five, six, seven, eight. Three times in total, two, three, hold four, then we pique twice, and five, and seven, Eight. Same thing side, always closing front. One, two, and three, four. This is the second one. And third one you hold. Three, four, and five. And seven, close back. Now, we go tendu back to put your inside hand on your supporting hip. I'll explain why before the second side. Three, four, we turn our hips away. So turn your hips, if both of your hips were headlights, they would face off the road. So five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four. We lift five, six, one more jeté, eight. Then you do the same thing one more time. Don't kick the furniture behind you. One, two, place three, Four, turn five, six, and seven. One more time. Two and three, four, five, six, and seven, and eight. To finish. Baton jeté. Hold. Always closing front for this. Now, tendu back, hand turn. Lift, one more jeté. Please don't kick your furniture. deserve a little bit of an explanation regarding why I've had you do the unorthodox choice of putting your hand on your inside hip. 
Now, I have a way I like to talk about any kind of extension to the back, as you've heard me say for the past couple of weeks. You don't want to think about both hips staying totally facing where you're going, because it is almost impossible to turn your back leg out. So what you want to imagine is this. Imagine you have a really fancy car. You know you have some of those Mercedes now on the headlights on the front that as you're cornering, they actually can work independently of each other a little bit and anticipate the corner. It's like the headlight leads into the corner. So I want you to think that if both my hip bones are headlights, imagine that I'm heading into a corner this direction. So this hip is staying here towards the front and leading into that corner, but this hip is actually at the corner that we were just at beforehand. Yeah, so they're sort of going almost this way. If I do this, I can't turn it out. If I let that open a little bit, but I really make sure that this hip is facing the front, that's the important thing, then you'll really make sure that you're well placed in your arabesque. What we don't want to be is in the ditch. Coup de pied. Seven, eight. Then, actually, let's close fifth for that one. Eight. Hand on your sternum. One. Forward. Two. Side three. It's just the upper back. Four. And round. Six. Seven. Eight. Same thing again. This should be easy. Whew. Ah. And five. Six. Seven, eight. Lift your front foot in coup de pied. One, two. Other hand on your sternum. Four, find your zen. Six, seven, eight. You're still there. Nine, ten, eleven, ah, twelve. And why not? Let's do arabesque at the end. Five, Six, I just went from 12 to five, that was strange. Eight, and we'll just finish there. Tendu front, turning in and out. To the back, arm to third, rond de jambe. Just did that turning out action, so keep it going now. Reverse. Arm up. How 
How soon can you rotate that heel? Closing fifth. Breathe. Focus your eyes on one point in the room in front of you, just above eye level. That will be your anchor, arms. Reach, reach, reach. So in this exercise, we actually have something new that we've not done before. We have this circular port de bras or is it sometimes called rond de corps, yeah, round of the body. So you want to imagine that you're not just hitting front, then I go directly to what I know to be side bend, and then I go directly to what I know to be back bend. You have those three points, but you need to illustrate all the little points in between. So it's connecting not just three dots, but you know, 25 dots, maybe even more, at every single point. So it has that smooth quality. We're only using just the upper back now, but that will translate later when it becomes a full forward bend side all the way back with this big luxurious arm. Yeah, so we want to get that smoothness as soon as we can. So we plie and lift coup de pied. We go down to teton du front. Three, four, little lift, down. Six and seven, eight. One more to the side. Two and three, four. Little bit over your four starch. Demi point, five, six. Now can you push with your toes, just your toes? Push seven and eight. Now we go one, hold two, place your hand. Look familiar? Four. Now we go fondue back. Five, six, 
and seven, eight. One more. Make sure that supporting hip is facing right in front of you the whole time. Then we lower, whoo, lower, six, and high arabesque to finish. side of Batmont Fondue, we have something new that we've not done in the past two weeks. We have that fondue coming directly from fifth position. Yes, so you're not only lifting your foot but you're playing at the same time because we've done one or the other but not both together as of yet. So what you really want to think about is making sure that you keep that heel nicely forward as you lift it up because it's really tempting, I'll go sideways so you can see, it's very tempting and very simple to do this attractive line, whoops, and then you have to fix it on the way up. So to avoid that, you want to feel almost like the, your fifth metatarsal, so the very outside of the foot that's going into the fondue is almost like a magnet, and it's trying to draw back into that fondue so that you keep that heel nicely forward and away. How'd you do? How'd I do? foot again today. So you'll lift your foot to a flexed coup de pied. Eight. Now we go two accent in, one, two, just little pity bat with a flex foot, and then three. Three and four. Repeat. Five, six, seven, and eight. We frappe front. One, two, bring it in. Four, frappe side. Six, bring it in. Guess what? Again. One, two, three, and four, five, six, seven, knee still, frappe side, two, bring it in, four, you'll only do one because we'll place fifth, six, seven, just to give yourself a little bit of a break, then guess what? Eight, you go to the back, just frappes, one, two, and a three, four, and a five, six, Seven, eight, third time, two, and a three, four in total, five, six. Ooh, give that standing leg a rest. Now we go releve. One, two, and a three, four, five, six. Again, focus your eyes. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and finish here. Seven, eight. 
hopefully, you will stay there forever. Lift flex in. Frappe front. Side. Bring it in. Repeat. One frappe side. Close back. Good. Lifting up to the back. Again, where's that supporting hip? is horrendous because it never feels right. It always feels like something is weird, but I have a little bit of a helpful hint for frappe back. You want to imagine a little bit more, rather than thinking that the trajectory of your leg is going down to strike the floor, you actually want to think of it just like skimming. Well, you should think about skimming anyway, but I find back it's especially important. So it's like you just go down and you skim the surface on the way back. Just skim it, bring it in. Skim it, bring it in. Like you were skimming rocks on the surface of a lake or something. It has to have that just barely hit. Because the moment you start going downwards, you start to get all sorts of weird things happening up here. So you really want to keep that skim going so that your pelvis, especially your tailbone, can stay as calm and placid as said lake. Repeat. Remember, it's just the thigh that's... Oh no, the thigh's not moving at all. It's just the knee. Frap it back. Remember that skin. Last time. Now, rising up. Take your balance. Remember, focus those eyes. Really see the thing that you're looking at. Now, we have the adagio, which you will be very happy to know is not nearly as terror-inducing as the past two. You have a little bit of a moment of therapy in this one, let's say. So we'll go. Five, six, and seven. Tendu front on the introduction. Eight. Now, you put your heel down, you bend your leg, and you give yourself a stretch. So we go one, stick your sitting bones out for this. Two, angle back. Three, really stick your bum out. Five, six, you should feel a nice stretch along the back of your leg. Now, coming up, one, Two, okay, we have to do a little bit of torture. Lift, three, and four, relatively long. Five, and six, close, seven, tendu side. Now, you do the same thing, but put your outside hand where we've been doing it this week, remember? Bashing you over the head with a concept. Put on your inside hip. One, two, again, you can take your hips this way, stretch. And four, and five, six, coming up, seven, back to second, sorry, uh, wait, one, two, now you lift, three, and four, come back down, six, 
and turn to face the bar, seven, eight, with the same length that you were just using at the back. Eight count, right the way along to the back. We're taking the plunge. Tendu, two, right the way along. Three, and four, and five, and six, and seven, and eight, we do it again. One, and two, lift, three, and four, and five, six, and seven, and eight. Now, you step away from the bar in parallel. Step one, two, you deserve it after this. Roll down, three, and four, and just take your elbows. If you do yoga, this is like ragdoll, seven, and eight, and either you can just, this is not swinging, this is swinging. Either you can stay here, or you can swing back and forth, just nice and loosely for the last phrase to give your back a little bit of a break. Tendu front, have a stretch. Really stick those sitting bones out. You can turn in and out your leg if you like. Coming up. the plunge into full releve long to the back. Now we've talked about a couple of these concepts over the past two weeks and including this one so let me just do a quick laundry list refresh. So remember a little bit of time ago we spoke about the sphere that sits in your sternum. If you don't know what I'm talking about go have a look at episodes one and two. I think you will be enlightened. No so we have this sphere that sits in our sternum, and when we take our leg to the back, remember, it needs to track slightly forward in space as you lift your leg, and then ever so slightly roll upwards so that we don't pitch forward. But that tracking forward is really important because you cannot keep your leg here, or your leg, your torso here, and lift your leg at the back. It's just not anatomically possible. So we have to get that moving forward. Then the second thing, remember when we did all this little, tiny little lift with our heel the past, in two weeks, I think it was uh, week two we did that. Yeah, so you want to again, feel right over the ball of that foot so that you could go up at any moment so we're not sitting back here. The third thing that we spoke about today is where these hips are facing. Yeah, so it's all those three things, here, here and then here to really make a beautiful arabesque. Now lift your leg as high as you feel you can take your leg while still keeping all those three elements in check. Have a stretch. Again, turn in and out if you need. Show. 
facing the bar. Now, think of your laundry list. Remember, sphere, forward, hips. Stepping back. So now, to finish our bar, we have Grand Battement. Starting in fifth position, we go five, six, put your hand behind your tailbone, seven, eight. You can just keep it relaxed right in line with your tailbone. So that was seven, eight. We go Grand Battement front, one and two, hold three, four and a five, Six, hold, seven, eight, three in total. One, two, hold, three, lift, passe, either beside that knee or underneath that knee, whatever works for you. Five, six, place it, seven, eight. We go to the side. One, two, always close front. Four, and brush. Six, seven, eight. One more, two, three, four. I'm amalgamating these two things down to the floor. Five, Six, same leg, eight. We go to the back. Just make sure you can see me. We go back, one and two, hold three, four, keep your stomach upright, seven, eight, three times in total, two, three, four, sorry, one push up, six, seven, eight, and then you're going to do it on the other leg. So we get double the trouble to the back because we'll do right and left on the first side and then right and left on the second side. Now remember, are both your sitting bones facing the floor with those laser pointers on them like we talked about last week? Rushing down to the floor, dig that trench, now to the floor, same leg, push up position, have a go. said be careful of things around you. That was close. So if you cast your mind back to last week, remember that we did that grand battement here with our backs to the bar so that you couldn't pitch your tailbone back so that's why I've got you with your hand behind your tailbone now, so that we can still be aware of that. And if you didn't do the class last week, let's say you're joining us for the first time, again, check it out, or just think about it now, yeah? We don't want to take that going back when we do grump at mall front, or indeed do any strange things when we go side. Where's your tailbone? Down to the floor, the leg you were just using.
Hadi koşa. The coast is clear. Last time. So finally, we have a little adagio slash port de bras. So starting in fifth position, facing the downstage left corner, we go five, six, seven, eight. To the front, small leg. One, two, you can look to the front if you need, or you can look there. Four, one more time, five, six, seven, eight. Plie small arabesque, one, two, change your arm, three, four, walk back, walk side, walk directly front, and close. Now we lift a passe, one, two, hold, three, bring them up, four, now you pop the champagne, this is what I like to call it, lift up even taller, pop the champagne, five, six, and seven, eight, come up, one arm, two, same arm as leg, opposite arm, two walks, five, six, if you don't have space, give yourself a little scooch back, seven, eight, and then you're ready to start on the second side. So we did that on both sides in one piece of music, so we don't need to go back and do it again. However, I strongly suggest that you maybe take another stab at it with this in mind. So at that very beginning, we're doing that front and back and front and back, sort of that pendulum swing with your leg through passe par terre, and I want you to acknowledge what needs to happen in here, so where your weight needs to be. So I need to be a little bit back here. Now when I go to arabesque, I need to change. Remember it's that sphere, that tracking. Then I need to bring it back. Then I need to change again. I'm really trying to get what needs to happen in the body as you lift into an arabesque position. So we really want to incorporate those subtle changes of weight. So that's a wrap on episode three of our level one advanced beginner ballet classes from my living room to you, care of Canada's National Ballet School. Uh, thank you so, so much again for joining me today. It's a thrill to be able to do these classes. I really miss being able to put on my teaching clothes and actually see people in the studio and spend time there. So I'm so excited that we can all share this together 
a little bit virtually, and one day we'll all be together again. Now, I do just want to make two other quick notes. My first one is please, please, please share with us any video pictures you have of yourself doing this class on Instagram or Facebook, etc., and use the hashtag sharing dance. We'd love to see how our community is engaging with us and really love to dance with you. And the second thing is that Canada's National Ballet School, if you're not aware, is a charitable organization and we've had to stop all our programming and we have a huge plethora of programming. We have the professional ballet academic program, we have the adult ballet program, we have our associates program, we have our dancing with Parkinson's program, we have our sharing dance program, and it's all stopped. So if you have the means to, please, please, please visit www.nbs-enb.ca and find out how you can help make a contribution to Canada's National Ballet School so we can continue sharing dance with the community and the whole world at large because right now we really do need to share as much as possible together. And having said that, that's all from me for this week. I hope to see you next time. If you do intermediate ballet, if that's also in your repertoire, I highly recommend that you check out class this coming Thursday with the fantastic Philip Payne one more time. I hope you enjoyed Kate Garrett's class last week. And until next Tuesday, I bid you adieu.